Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at PO Solver here, and specifically we're going to spend some time looking at a multi-flop aggregation analysis, or um, a multiple aggregation uh, style of analysis for multiple post-flop scenarios. In a prior video, we went ahead and looked at a single post-flop scenario. Now we're going to be taking the opportunity to um, explore and, and analyze multiple flops um, and how they affect the ranges, how they affect board composition, lines of play, so on and so forth. So what we're looking at here is the post-flop tree building and calculations tab in PO Solver, specifically the no limit tab. And I think this is all pretty standard stuff with respect to the um, previous video that we went, we went ahead and did. We have um, two ranges here. We have an out of position range. We have an in position range. We have a board, a starting pot, effective stacks. And then kind of down here in, in I think what is the, the, the main composition area, we have a whole series of bet sizes that we are working with. Now, uh, in this exact scenario or this exact analysis, we do have a spread limit sizing or spread limit uh, post flop scenarios that we are looking for here. So what we have in the boxes here are a series of capped bets. If we were looking at a more of a no limit type of scenario, we would just use straight percentages. So we have a, a 20 cap bet, a 35 cap bet, um, and then we have a 30 cap, 50 cap, 75 cap for the remainder of the turns and rivers. If we were looking at a no limit scenario, we would probably have, you know, 33%, 50%, 66% or 75%. Um, and then of course, over down through here, we would have other multiple scenarios uh, that would be laid out. So the structure would be a little bit different in terms of a no limit, but at the same time, the overall approach of kind of what we're showing here of doing an analysis across multiple post-flop scenarios uh, is identical. There really shouldn't be there really shouldn't be much difference much difference at all. So when we went ahead and did the singleton analysis, we went ahead and set this all up. We went ahead and uh, we built a tree. We uh, press the go button, we got uh, results over here on the right hand side, and then we went over here to the browser and it showed us what the actual what the actual results are. Now what we're doing here that is a little bit different is we're going ahead and, let me click back to that area, we're going to go ahead and use a uh, scripting functionality. Now this is functionality that comes out of the pro version of PO Solver, so you will need to um, go ahead and have that upgraded license to use, use this exact functionality. So in the the, the, the interface here, the user interface, we have a single board that's defined. And I'm going to click this button to show generate script and allow me just to grab a little additional screen real estate. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to go ahead and let's just say I want to generate some flops randomly. So let's just go ahead and do this. It'll go ahead and whatever number I enter here, it'll generate this, this many flops. Um, I really shouldn't need to update too much more of this. Um, my accuracy is a quarter percent of the pot. Um, I have a very large timeout. I think this is all pretty standard stuff. And then I have functionality here which generates generates a script. So talking about the scripting here for just a brief second, what it's doing is it, uh, what you see over here at the top, um, it's setting up ranges and accuracy. It's creating all of the various lines that we see here. And I think kind of uh, quite a bit of meat and potatoes right here, but allow me to get down to the think the part of the script that makes the most sense in terms of explaining this. Great. When it goes ahead and does all the setup, the heavy lifting or the heavy computational parts really start to come down here in these components. And hopefully on the recording you've maximized the screen. It goes ahead and runs a command called build tree, skip if done, and let me see if I can find the command. Ah, here it is, great. Uh, set board. So you can see in this exact instance it's setting a board of five of spades, three of diamonds, deuce of diamonds. We have the next one that happens to be here, king of spades, queen of diamonds, two of clubs, so on, so on and so forth. And these are the values that appear right here. In fact, the two records I just read are the ones that I've highlighted. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to run, let me just grab a little, little more screen real estate here. It's going to run everything I have over here on the left hand side in the original setup that I've just been describing for the past couple minutes. It's going to run this analysis against this exact, against this exact flop and it'll generate a specific save file um, and then that save file will contain all the data and the equilibrium strategy uh, for, for that exact analysis or that exact, that exact flop. So where this comes in handy is once that's done or all of that, that work has been processed and everything has been generated, we can go up here to, let me just close down this window, we can go up here to analysis and we can select this uh, option right here which is run runouts aggregated frequencies analysis over multiple files. So I'll go ahead and click on this. 
And what it's done now, now I already have some I already have some setup work here, but I have the solution or the the solution file that's loaded that I'm demonstrating this from comes from a whole set um, of solutions in a directory that's here. And from that directory, it says, oh, I've got a setup file. I have a whole series of other flops that are being used here, so on and so forth. And from those, it's going ahead and uh, it will produce an ag produce an aggregation report um, that'll tell us the the high level strategy um, in a given high level strategy in a given situation um, across a whole series a whole series of files there. So it kind of gives us you know rather than I think just a single flop and, and a detail view, it kind of percolates us up to more so kind of the the forty five thousand foot view level. So it takes us up takes our, our perspective way above the trees and we get to see more of the forest is probably the best way to best way to describe this so when I go ahead when I go ahead and run this um, now I've already ran this for for an exact instance let me go ahead and bring over um, my screen over here it'll save to the, it'll save to the file system in Excel so I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and do this. So with that, what I have here is uh, the actual result from the file. So we have a whole series of flops that have been that have been specified, and what we're looking at here is the the root position. So uh, let me go ahead and do uh, a little bit of ham and eggs, or let me just let me just go back here to to PO for a quick second. And we look here. We have this exact flop strategy, which is going to be the Jack of Diamonds, Ten of Spades, uh, Four of Spades, and you see we have we have a high level strategy, specifically these two boxes that are here. So we have a bet twenty option, and then we have a check. If I go ahead and go back to uh, the the aggregation report that's here you can see we have a bet 20 and a check that's right here so what we end up doing is we end up going down very common or multiple lines of strategy and we go ahead and then are able to go and produce an aggregate an aggregate analysis of what we should be doing um, on these given flops, given turns, so on and so forth, and even though I describe this as you know the lifting ourselves um, uh, out of the, the top of the forest and, and top of the trees and able to see the kind of the the whole lay of the forest, the lay of the land, we will be descending back down to the detail and looking at some looking at some detail detail strategy there. So if I go ahead over here, I think I can just actually do something like this. Uh, let me look at data. I want to go ahead and pin this down. Uh, let me just go ahead and do a sort over here. Um, great, and I think this is the I think this is the flop that I went ahead and just read off. So here we can see that see that entry, and I kind of want to just go through here and show just a little bit about this. Um, let me just go ahead and put just a little bit of formatting on this just to make it a little bit easier. So I want to add a column for notes because this will be pretty important later. Let me go ahead and make this quite a bit wider. Let me go ahead and add. Uh, home. Let me just add a little bit of formatting to this here. That's great. And then I think it will also be helpful to go ahead and put some formatting uh, down here on our totals. Actually, let me go ahead and do this here. I'll take this off. I'll just do a heading. Yeah, I'll just do a heading three there. I think that looks good. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done a basic sort on this. We can see that all of our tens, queens, kings, jacks, aces, and now our uh, and then our middle cards are kind of grouped together by how they are, are laid out. So there's a little bit of logical ordering or sorting that goes on here. So what we can do, I think the easiest thing is let me just highlight this right here. I'm going to press Control Q and then give this a color coding. And, and this is, I think, where the utility of this whole entire process really starts to, to show itself. So what we can what we can see here then uh, for the out of position player that's starting off in the hand, we can go ahead and see that on this flop with a uh, ten of spades, eight of spades, uh, seven of diamonds, they're going to be betting a majority of the time and they're going to be checking a smaller percentage of the time. We can see on this exact flop uh, there's going to go ahead and be kind of a 50-50 spot. We can then see right here through a majority of the high cards, so your queens, your kings, there's going to be checking. Um, there probably are some very specific properties about the um, jack of spades, eight of spades, seven of diamonds that, that causes it to be 50-50. And then we kind of go back in here to a majority of the time that we'll go ahead and be checking, um, so on and so forth. And then we get to an overall um, aggregation so we can see that 
basically you know across the entirety of flops that we've identified here uh, we go ahead and are going to be checking a majority of the time and we're going to be betting small um, some other frequency of the time in terms of the other data that we're looking at here so let's go ahead and talk about the exact columns that we have on the report we'll just kind of stick with this screen and, and finish out here um, and then I'll talk for a brief uh, few minutes ab about how we get to uh, the actual um, these actual flops here global percentage uh, is a representation so it's basically going to be this column here is a representation of how frequently this line or this scenario actually occurs. So in this case, we are at the very first element where the out of position player, um, it's their action. So 100% uh, of the time, the out of position player is going to have their action on the flop. So the, all of these scenarios are going to occur at an extremely high always type of frequency. Now we have the equity, so this equity, um, again, equity, equity, so it's going to basically tell us the equity uh, that their range would have on this exact flop. We also have an overall EV, uh, which is right, right through here. We go ahead and have um, EQR. EQR stands for equity realization. I think it's a very interesting calculation. It's basically, if I'm describing this correctly, it's basically a scaled EV that takes into account to the equity, and it's simply saying um, how often do we realize our equity um, in this situation or this this exact spot um, and we can go ahead and see here that our equity realization is higher than the in position uh, and that could be a determining factor and again um, our equity is greater here we have a slightly we have a higher EV we have higher equity so that could be a strong influencer to go ahead and bet and now we'll also in, in subsequent videos we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the details that go in here and this is really where the notes column comes in handy is we can go ahead and write um, I think a good number of notes that are good number of meaningful notes in here uh, that will go ahead and help us study and review um, these situations and scenarios as well. So that being said, um, not to deviate too, too far, we have the imposition equity, the imposition EV, and then we have an imposition um, equity realization. And then finally down here, we have the summary values for the entire set of flops that we are, that we are going to go ahead and look at here. So that being that being said, we can see what is the um, uh, uh, what are the averages across um, all the flops in these exact spots that, that occur here. So suffice it to say, it's you know uh, not very uncommon, but you know just the, the the rule of thumb strategy. You know the out of position player typically will go ahead and check. There are some situations where donking, um, you know, to to use that terminology or, or kind of a uh, a naked lead out uh, would occur here um, on this exact flop for for I think for very specific reasons. Um, and the great part is we can open up the tool and go ahead and take a look uh, take a look at those what those exact and specific reasons are. I want to go back and take a second here. So that that's really the analysis. Now we can actually break this down. This is flop. Um, flop is pretty simple. Um, it's not really that complex. When we get to turn, uh, turn is actually way more complex because what turn is actually going to do is it's going to take this line here for number five in this flop and it's going to permutate and iterate um, all of the turn cards that come out. So we can take a look at uh, more of kind of the, the aggregated it's still aggregated, but it's the next level of detail down for what happens when an ace comes off, king comes off so on and so forth. So we can take a look at all of the same details that are there and you can actually um, at, a, at a very high, very quick level, go ahead and see what your um, what your strategy, you know, where it kind of leans itself and where your bets and your checks uh, can go ahead and, and even folds can go ahead and uh, begin to allocate themselves out to. So I want to talk here about uh, how these actual flops are chosen. So I'll just go ahead and highlight highlight this right here. Now the, the tool will go ahead and we kind of showed this in just a few moments ago. It will go ahead and show that there is the opportunity to create random flops, so on and so forth. Um, but obviously in the PO Solver community and the developers, a great question has come out. Um, what are flops that are worth uh, investigating? What are flops that are worth looking at um, before others, so on and so forth? So if I remember correctly, there's something like 22,000, 21,000 um, possible flop combinations that can occur um, in Texas in Texas Hold'em. It's been determined by the research of others that there are 1,755 that are strategically significant. However, to go ahead and compute the analysis for 1,755 would take quite some time uh, in you know, not really be, it's probably more of a case of information overload in, in that exact situation. So 
the question comes up, what are appropriate subsets to go ahead and uh, look at and evaluate? So that being said, there is a article uh, that's posted here on the PO Solver website. So uh, if you just kind of Google for PO Solver and you look for their My Shopify site and there's a blog that's up there, um, there's a great blog article I'll just kind of highlight right here, choosing a subset of flops to represent the whole game. Um, there's obviously a lot of detail here, there's a link to a 2 plus 2 article, so on and so forth, but really there, uh, where this kind of all distills itself down to is the developers of the software have determined this is the appropriate 25, 49, 74, 95, and 184, uh, 184 flop, flop, sub, flop subsets. Now, we went ahead and looked at um, uh, a previous visualization uh, when we're doing um, uh, kind of the one-off post-flop analysis where we looked at kind of the, the EV or the accuracy um, of the solutions. They've got it kind of gone ahead and done that and you'll actually find this link what I'm what I'm showing you here uh, hopefully you're, again if you're watching the video you're watching this in a full screen comparison but they show you the the 25 flops compared to results on uh, the 1755 equity versus equity versus full range so up here in the upper left there's going to be the 25 the 49 is going to go ahead and be in the middle here 74 over here to the right 95 the 184 and then finally there's a comparison for 100 three will tipped in flop compared against the same uh, 1755 flops equity versus full range so trying to make even comparisons now you can see you know where there are stronger colorings there are clear gaps um, on the on the 25 flops but you can kind of sort of see over here when we get to the 49 74 95 and, and especially the 184 the differences are extremely minor and this 184 probably captures sufficiently uh, the you know the overall strategy or the overall picture uh, that can you know uh, what you should be seeing or evaluating or learning um, from these flops as compared to building out to the entire 1,755. So in this case, what I'm showing you here, we are looking at the 25 the the 25 flops, and in terms of the overall analysis, yeah, there are going to be uh, you know some gaps um, you know again and I think you can identify here with the, with the, the the coloring but at the same time it's also a matter of the the processing time so when we do go ahead and process a solution so let me jump back over here to PO solver when we do go ahead and process the solution estimate estimate tree size you know we have a machine that basically has 128 gigabytes of memory in it and we're almost using the entirety of that memory it does take several hours about six hours to go ahead and process um, to go ahead and process uh, a, a post flop solution in its entirety so in this case I am using actually two machines that are identical with the same memory setup so it takes a few days to go ahead and process even just these uh, just the 25 flops in the manner that we do go ahead and use them uh, it kind of just becomes one of those things where it's just uh, it's going to have to be good enough. The 49 flops would take a couple more days. The analysis would get a little more in depth in terms of what we're doing or working at, working at with on Excel. But otherwise, um, uh, you know, I, again, I, th I think it falls into the good enough category to give you a good overall picture of what you uh, should be doing in given situations and given spots, um, especially as it relates to doing in a, in a live game. If we were going ahead and developing a, a bot type of solution, then then absolutely, then you would certainly need more detail, greater higher, greater degree of accuracy, so on and so forth. But as it pertains as it pertains to live play, um, I don't think that I don't think there's any problem or concern with going ahead and using uh, using this and, and what we see here and the the approach taken. So this is how we're going to go ahead and do um, the evaluation of multiple flops. Um, where we kind of go with this next is, is a series of videos where we actually start to uh, build out these spreadsheets in given situations and given spots and then we go ahead and start breaking them down. So we'll go ahead and take a look at, and I'll just be a little bit jumpy, but let's go ahead and take a look at which exact flop we have here. So we have the Jack of Diamonds, Ten of Spades. Um, and then we have an 84% check. Let me go back over here to Excel. So we have Jack of Diamonds, Ten of Spades. Yep. So this is this is this is the record. This is the record that we have. Now everything here that we see on the screen does pertain to the out of position, to the the flop, the first action going to the out of position player on the flop. When we go back over here, we can go ahead and see. Let me just go back over here and grab my PO window. Great. We can go over here and really the big thing we just 
really dive into the range explorer and th that's really what this is that's really just kind of what this is all about we go ahead and look to see um, what are we doing with all of our combinations we look to see uh, we have 254 and a half combinations here all we look to see what are we doing with our checking combinations um, and, and how these distribute out um, also as well too what are we doing with our what are we what are we doing with our betting combinations so in this exact case we are checking top pair and top pair is going to be a jack so we are checking top pair a fair portion a fair portion of the time um, let me see what is our board here yeah we are checking a fair portion of the time and then our bet our betting combinations we break it down here so not to go ahead and go through the whole in that whole post flop analysis or kind of starting for for these exact cells but this is what we're doing we'll mainly be spending a lot of time here on the range, a lot of time here on the range explorer kind of breaking it down our findings we'll go ahead and break that out and uh, move those in over into excel so from a, a note taking or learning perspective uh, we can go ahead in into our notes here and we can go ahead and write you know blah 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 so on and so forth and then what we can do is you know any one of your other online cloud providers like a google drive google sheets dropbox um, it's totally handy to go ahead and save those and then and anywhere you are at the casino um, you have time to study or you know a coffee shop whatever uh, you may not have access to po and all the solutions that are here available on on this kind of more server grade machine um, but you can go ahead and have uh, you know again nice easy notes to learn from read review learn and so on and so forth so this is what a multi-flop analysis begins to look like. Um, probably not too interesting, um, just in terms of the actual data, just because you, the out-of-position player is checking a majority of the time. But when we do get into the details, um, you know, subsequently, I think we will have some very interesting findings and very useful strategies and tactics that we can uh, put forward in our uh, live game. Any questions, thoughts, ideas, uh, feel free to reach out. And uh, thanks a lot for watching this. Take care.